It's hard to believe as I'm sitting here in Pigeon Forge at uh, 82 degree temperature. Uh, the air conditioning is off. The windows are open. It's a nice cool day. Uh, that in two months we will be doing the beet harvest. Uh, we just got our uh, dates in and this will be our third year going back to the beet harvest. I meet my son up there who's also a full-time RVer and we actually spend uh, several weeks to a month together and we thoroughly enjoy each other's company, uh, do some work and make some money. Uh, so in this video I'm going to go through the equipment that we wear, why we wear it, and what seems to work, what not. Like I said we've done this for this will be our third year. We'll go over what you can expect and at the end we'll talk about the different types of monies that we earned. Now let me get my clothes and I'll be back in a minute. We're going to do the clothes and we're going to start uh, the most important part from the feet up. I got it all laid out here so you'll see me leaning back and forth. First thing I have is a nice set of work boots. Uh, these are not very expensive work boots. I only use these for the beet harvest and you can see they've been worn quite quite well. I imagine I've got a lot of use out of this. Uh, they are tie. Uh, they do clean up afterwards with a good washing and a good hosing. On the inside I do have uh, gel uh, inserts. And uh, what I suggest is that you do not go to a, a big box store and buy, uh, uh, buy their gel packs. Go to a place like Dick's or a Sporting Goods and uh, buy theirs. They are certainly uh, more professional at uh, being able to protect your feet from a pounding environment. If you can see from this one, it has a gel in the front, a nice support, gel in the back. Uh, again, I would not buy the uh, name brand, the doctor name brand at the uh, big box or I go to uh, Dick's or another sporting goods and buy. And they're not cheap, they're $25, dollars $30, $35 for a decent pair of insoles. So those are the shoes. On top of the shoes, I usually wear two pairs of socks. Uh, last year I tried one thick pair, one thick wool pair. Not only were they not, they were not very comfortable, but they were bulky and uh, I immediately discarded them. What I have is a thinner pair of, uh, these are almost, I think they call them bamboo, super thin socks and over them I put a thicker pair of woolen type socks. Again the thinner one kind of wicks the, uh, the perspiration away from your feet and this gives you some warmth. Uh, next thing we always bring with us is our bucket and our Epsom salt. You will need this. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, it's been a while since you've probably been on your feet 12 hour days. Uh, it's nice when you get home at the night to uh, some nice hot water, some Epsom salt. It'll actually start hardening the bottom of your feet up. Uh, I'll go through that package and uh, I'll enjoy every night of it. Trust me. Uh, next we're going to work up to is the uh, pants. Uh, we're up in Grand Forks, we're up at the uh, main uh, piling area slash factory and uh, right in Grand Forks on the uh, North Dakota side there's a huge Walmart and it's a good place to buy any particular clothing that you need instead of stocking up. I know there's videos out there that say go to Goodwill but if the product isn't good it's not going to do you any good. So I have two pairs of old dungarees. Now why do I call them old? because after the beet harvest I will never use these again. Uh, while I'm up at Grand Forks I'm going to buy two new pair to replace these two old pair. Uh, these are just standard pair. Buy them loose. Uh, sorry about that. I had a noisy car start up at, uh, behind me. Uh, underneath the dungarees I will, and I'm going to stand up, I'm just going to buy standard uh, sweatpants. So what I'll do the entire harvest is I'll have the sweatpants underneath. I'll have my two pairs of dungarees that I'll use one for 10 or 12 days, the next for 10 or 12 days. You really don't want to wash these things after they get the uh, North Dakota mud on it. Uh, they're worthless. It gets into everything. So traditionally what we do is the last day, uh, we take all of our clothes, we drop at the dumpster, we undress right at the dumpster, throw it all in except for the boots, and uh, drive back in our t-shirt and our sweatpants. 
uh, top. What I usually do is I'll wear a t-shirt, I'll wear a sweatshirt, again I have two of these, uh, and on top of that I will actually wear a full hoodie sweatshirt, okay, on top of that. Now the same thing will happen is, is that uh, the undershirts I'll change every day, the sweats I'll change every day, the pants I'll go through two, maybe three of them, but probably two during the entire harvest, uh, the sweaty, uh, I'll go through two of these or one of these, probably just the one this year. What I do is when I get back to the trailer, I just take the hoodie off, set it by the door, I take the dungarees off, set it by the door, the shoes, I leave it, leave it outside. Inside the trailer, I put a huge canvas mat out. Uh, you're not going to want any of this mud to get in your trailer, but it, it does get cold. Uh, so you probably want to step in, get undressed, pile it right then and there, and then uh, go on and take your shower and, and get ready for bed. Uh, lastly, uh, it's a skull cap. I wear the skull cap. I tried uh, the wool caps. They don't work very well underneath the uh, safety helmet that you get, and uh, they really didn't add a lot to the, uh, the heat. So what I'll do is I'll put the skull cap on, and then the hoodie on over it, tighten it down. I'll also, while I'm up at uh, North Dakota, buy a uh, one of those bands for your mouth, and I'll use that around my neck, and that'll take care of that. Uh, the last thing you may or may not need is a raincoat. Now, interesting thing about uh, the beet harvest is that the beet harvest will not be harvested over 72 degrees. Uh, it'll be too warm. The harvest will stop during the day if it's over 72. It also won't harvest if the night is below 32 freezing. It'll stop at that point and you'll find out that one small little bit of rain, uh, I'm talking about a uh, drizzle, uh, turns the North Dakota dirt into mud. These trucks get stuck, they don't move, so just a little bit of rain and the uh, event is again called. So uh, rain is not, is so I think only one day if we actually stood in the rain, it was the last day of the harvest and they just wanted to finish up and get out of there and uh, otherwise every other rain event they canceled it. So that's your closing again. Uh, we change our undergarments every day. The outer garments we keep and we dispose of them at the end of the uh, event, at the end of the beet harvest and including the hoodie, the dungarees, uh, the flannels, and not the boots. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Now start dates. Uh, we've gotten ours. Everybody's starting to get theirs. You should get yours in the near future if you didn't get it. Uh, the start date, everybody's going to start uh, getting together the last week of uh, September. Usually the Tuesday or the Wednesday they'll have you come in. Uh, you'll sit down in the office. You'll fill out all your paperwork, bring in the IDs that they require of you. Without the IDs you're not going to work. You'll sit down at a video, a safety video, just like Amazon, you're going to go through a safety video and go through all that. Uh, the harvest does not start until the 1st. Uh, the night shift will start the evening or 10 o'clock the night before, uh, which will make it the uh, 30th, I guess, the 30th, and, uh, but it won't start till then. So you have time uh, between doing your uh, obligation to your uh, paperwork uh, to get some shopping done. Uh, remember that uh, there's places to eat. It's a good restaurant. Uh, if you go out to the VA, uh, they have uh, American Legion has nice nightly dinners. A lot of us go out to the American Legion and uh, there's a few nice restaurants but on a regular basis ask around because 10, 15, 20 of us will get together and we'll hit this restaurant or that restaurant. Restaurants that are inexpensive. Uh, that's the most important thing. Inexpensive. Uh, positions. Now, interestingly enough, everybody wants to do the easy positions. Uh, skidsters. Everybody wants to be a skidster. Uh, there's only six positions on days and six on nights for skidsters. Last year on days, five of the six returned, so there was only one opening. So even though you might go to a class, don't get too excited. Uh, if you have any opportunity at all, it'll be if somebody leaves during the season, you get a backup. Uh, pile operators, uh, and that's six per shift. Uh, pile operators, there's 11 piling machines at the main uh, piling facility. Uh, the outlying ones I'm not familiar with. I've been at the main facility for, this will be my third year. 
So you have 11 pilers times two. Again, they're responsible for it. Advantage of pilers is you get to run the, the crew. Uh, the disadvantages are you're married to that machine. Uh, good stuff and bad. You do get paid extra on it. Uh, I usually work the ground crew with my son. We work on and off. Uh, we will be working nights this year. Uh, you work nights one year, days the next, nights the next. We kind of like nights anyways. The, the, the sunrises are beautiful up in North Dakota. Uh, the traffic isn't quite as bad as days. And uh, it does get cooler though. Uh, the nights when beet harvest starts getting to a close, we'll start getting into the 30s, uh, which, which can be chilly. The opposite advantage is, is that when you're working these piling machines, you get to park your vehicles right near the piling machine. So your food, your clothing, your extra clothing is right there next to you. When you take a break, uh, what we do is I take sheets, I buy a couple or use a couple out of my trailer and replace them, and I drape them over the seats onto the floor, and they're going to stay there for the duration of the beet harvest because you're going to be getting in with uh, dirty dungarees, in and out, in and out, and I happen to have cloth seats. So again, I drape all the seats with uh, sheets, and uh, again, when we hit that dumpster on the last day, it goes into the dumpster with all the rest of the stuff. Uh, pretty much it's an easy job. I'll try and get some videos up this year. I haven't in the past. Uh, be honest, there's a lot of people out of this. I think like 85, 95% of the workers there are work campers. So, you know, we're kind of easy on each other, but we get the job done. Last thing on the, uh, the clothing is, is that you will be provided with a reflective vest when you get there. You will be also provided with uh, safety helmets, uh, reflective type, and uh, hearing plugs. Uh, at the beginning, grab a few pair because they always run out. Uh, they have, if you get them really, really quick, they will have the side uh, protectors for your glasses. But again, if you don't get it early, they're going to run out. Uh, so those those are the particular items that they will provide for you. You have to provide all your personal gear. They'll provide all your safety gear. Uh, lastly, compensation. Uh, that's an important part. I mean, we're not going up for the weather. And believe me, uh, it's beautiful up there, but there's not a lot to do in the Grand Forks area. So we're all going for the money. Uh, two years ago, uh, Scott and I went up and Mary worked. So the three of us worked. And uh, so Mary and I had the advantage of a double paycheck. Uh, we work nights, so we got the 10% premium on nights. We uh, harvest went very quick, 12 days done. 12 days done. It was just no bad weather, no slowdown. The uh, the trucks were rolling good. There was no really. It was what they're saying is the quickest uh, season they can ever remember. And Mary and I walked away with about fifty-five, fifty-six hundred dollars, which I guess isn't bad in 12 days, but we were hoping for more. Uh, they pay you eight uh, straight standard time for eight hours, uh, time and a half for anything over eight hours, and double time if it's a Sunday. Well, that works fine because your first day uh, you work eight regular, your four is already considered overtime even though you haven't put 40 in. They're very fair on that. So if you get a week that has a lot of rain, you only work two or three days, you still will get overtime even if you don't hit your 40. Well, last year was a, uh, a difficult year. We had a lot of rain, and like I said, just a little bit of rain. We'll set it back two and three and four days, sometimes six. Uh, we were in no rush, uh, so the money was coming in slow, but we had no place to go. So it was a free site, free electric, free water. Uh, so we were quite happy and uh, started dragging. Uh, it's got to be the 22nd, 23rd of the month, give or take about there. And a lot of the work campers had uh, obligations to be Amazon, other jobs they were running off to. So they started slowly staggering out. It wasn't held against them because they had other opportunities they were required to be at. And uh, not much you can do about the weather. So what the management came out and offered is time and a half for every hour worked. <laughs> well, good for us. <laughs> it worked out just fine. So from the last almost full, two full weeks, uh, we were getting time and a half for every hour worked and double time for Sunday. You couldn't go wrong. So I believe Mary and I made a little over 10000 in five weeks. Again, I don't expect it. Uh, it's just the, the shortest to the longest. Well, what can I say? It happens. But just go with the understanding that you're going to make some decent money. Uh, and there's a lot of good people up there. 
And I guess about the last thing I have to say is really, really weird how they start this whole event. You're going to get there, they're going to sign you up for a bunch of classes. To some of them, you have no chance of ever getting in the class. You'll go to skidster classes, you'll go to uh, piler classes, uh, but you get paid for it. So sign up for the classes, figure you're going to get uh, paid for every hour that you're in class. Uh, you're finally going to get selected for something. Chances are it's 80% of them is ground crew. Like I said, the skidsters usually are people that come back last year. Pile operators is only 11. Uh, good luck. They do take new pile operators every year, especially if you're on nights. Uh, but it's weird how they select their ground crews. Uh, basically, you're going to show up. It's 10 o'clock on the uh, 30th, the last day of September. Uh, or it'll be first thing the next morning on day crew. Everybody will stand outside their office. You'll have your safety gear on. You're going to stand around saying, what the heck is going on? i got no idea. And why they do this, I have no idea. They're going to haul all the uh, pile operators off to the side. They'll talk to them for a few minutes, and then they're going to say, go out to the crowd and find your people. <laughs> and it's very irritating for the uh, piler operators and the people because you're standing around saying, ah, oh, what's going on? You know, we're all just standing around doing nothing. And the pile operators, especially if they're not very outgoing or... Uh, don't have strong management skills kind of wander around. Uh, do you have a job yet? Uh, are you working somewhere yet? Uh, so what we usually do is Scott and I will just find somebody as they come out of their group huddle and latch on to them and say, we're working for you. <laughs> so that's it. So don't be a little apprehensive when everybody stands around saying, what's going on? Uh, this will be the third year and I expect it's going to happen again. Now, uh, at this point, I don't believe I've forgotten too much. Uh, again, I can start with the beat jokes, you know, like uh, I'll beat you up to North Dakota or have an unbeatable experience. I mean, there's a bunch of them to go around, but go up there, have a good time. Again, talk to different people because uh, on rainy days, uh, on days, two or three days when they're shut down, we all meet at different places. Uh, often it's the American Legion. Sometimes it's the closest hamburger joint, but uh, they'll get around and you'll be able to sit down with 20, 30, sometimes 40. In fact, the American Legion last year went into a uh, uproar because on Friday night they had fish and uh, they have one person working the grill uh, and serving and doing the whole ball of wax and I believe like 110 of it showed up. <laughs> it took two and a half, three and a half hours to, uh, to get fed but nobody was in any rush so uh, there weren't very unhappy people and uh, they do sell beer at a, at a reasonably good rate. This is Hughes from Outdoor Staycations. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, safe journey subscribe uh, because I will be doing one or two videos up there uh, as the operation continues again thumbs up subscribed uh, it's used for outdoor staycation safe journeys